in the plantation region in North Sumatra, where I was working, tens of thousands of people were killed at the nearby Snake River. Their families were never told what happened. The bodies would drift out to sea. There, were, there was no physical evidence that the family had. The families just knew their loved ones disappeared one day from prison and never returned. So the act of killing and the look of silence form a single work, really. You can see either part first. About the impunity and rule of fear in the aftermath of the 1965 Indonesian genocide. The Look of Silence asks, what is it like to live surrounded by the boastful perpetrators? And it follows one survivor, Adi Ruku, Aku, whose brother was murdered. Abang saya, dibunuh itu, Pak. Tapi berhubung, karena pembunuhan ini di bawah komando Bapak, bukan kita juga. He's an optometrist, and he goes and visits all the men who killed his brother and tries to get them to take responsibility for what they've done while applying his trade as an optometrist, trying to test their eyesight. Adi's brother, Romley, was the one victim in that region whose murder had witnesses. And so Romley, over the, sen over the decades, had become a kind of synonym for the genocide as a whole. Adi said to me, I I need to meet the men who killed my brother to see if they can take responsibility for what they've done. And I said, absolutely not. There has never before been a film where survivors confront perpetrators while the perpetrators are still in power. No. For example, in preparation for all of the confrontations between Adi and the perpetrators, Adi's family would be at the airport with their bags packed, ready to evacuate in case anything went wrong. Once we found a way of doing it safely, we had to quickly establish intimacy between Adi and these perpetrators whom he'd feared his whole life. One way of doing that would be the eye test. First of all, it was something formal that Adi could concentrate on, and it would reassure the perpetrator at every moment that Adi sees the perpetrator as a human being. Kalau ini, Pak, ada tambah terang. Mana terang? Terang, terang. There's two scenes in The Look of Silence which have endured as some of the most beautiful and heartbreaking things I've ever witnessed and that have shaped my view of what it means to be a human being. One of them is a scene where Adi goes to visit his uncle and there's, they hug each other. You can see real warmth there. Astonishingly, the uncle reveals in this very small prison, the uncle was the guard dispatching the prisoners out to be killed, including his own nephew. What starts as loving becomes completely unsafe. It's like Hamlet, like the killers are your own family. The next scene in the film, Adi visits another perpetrator whose age since I'd met him seven years earlier. And now lives with, now his daughter lives with him, and she volunteers to sit in on the scene. She learns through her father's answers the grisly details of what her father did. Karena bapak yang membunuh itu kakak nggak bisa disalahin. Karena kakak juga nggak bisa. Bapak ini memang bapak kakak. You see her face collapse as she realizes that her father's not the hero she always hoped he was. She becomes very calm, very quiet, and does this amazing thing and listens to her conscience and apologizes to Adi. And Adi finally gets the apology he's been looking for. And in that moment, he realizes that now he, as has been his plan all along, he has to forgive. And when Adi gets up to leave, he hugs her, but he also hugs the father, the killer. I, I'll never forget, I mean, that, that scene's in my head all the time. As in any work of art, if it's powerful, it's not because of the new things we're learning, it's because of the way we're shaken to the core, because in those new things that we're learning, we recognize the very familiar. We think, oh no, is this really us? Is this really what it means to be human? Do I recognize these emotions, either in the perpetrators or in the survivors? Oh no, yes, of course I do. Oh yes, of course, this is us.